Welcome to today's episode of Bullish Talks, where we break down the world of finance and AI and help you understand the strategies that can elevate your business and finances. I'm David Bradley Ward, at least an AI version of me, and today we're diving deep into a topic that's becoming increasingly popular, direct listings and listing via introduction. Now, I know the world of IPOs and public offerings can feel like a maze, but what if I told you there's a simpler, cost-effective way to go public? If you're a company looking to avoid the complexity and cost of traditional IPOs, today's episode is for you. So sit tight, because for the next 15 minutes, we're going to explore why direct listings and listings via introduction might just be the perfect solution for your company. Let's kick things off by defining exactly what a direct listing is. Unlike a traditional IPO where a company issues new shares and raise capital, a direct listing doesn't involve issuing new shares at all. Instead, the company simply lists its existing shares on a stock exchange, allowing the public to start trading them immediately. This means there's no need for a big investment bank to act as an underwriter, no roadshows, no pricing drama the night before, and no complicated allocations. A direct listing is essentially a no-frills approach to going public. It's particularly appealing for companies that don't necessarily need to raise new capital but want to allow their existing shareholders, employees and early investors to cash in on their stakes subject to market liquidity. The first high-profile company to take this route was Spotify back in 2018 and since then, other major companies like Slack have followed suit. The trend is growing and for good reason. Next up is listing via introduction. This is a slightly different route, but similar in spirit to a direct listing. Listing via introduction means that a company gets its shares admitted to trading on a stock exchange without raising capital or issuing new shares, just like a direct listing. The key difference is that in this method, the shares are already owned by a broad enough base of shareholders, often through private transactions or existing investors. It's essentially a technical way of making those shares publicly tradable. This method is most common for companies already listed on another exchange or in cases where the company has sufficient liquidity through private markets. For instance, it's often used when a company is transferring from one exchange to another or when it wants to go public in another country without the hoopla of a full IPO. So why are both direct listings and listing via introduction so compelling? Let's break down the benefits. Now that we've defined the methods, let's dive into why they're gaining popularity. The first and arguably most obvious benefit is cost. A traditional IPO involves hefty fees paid to underwriters and investment banks that take the lead in selling your new shares to the public. In a direct listing or listing via introduction, you skip the underwriters altogether. No underwriting fees, no roadshow expenses, no syndicate of banks taking a cut of your raised capital. The cost savings can be enormous, sometimes saving companies millions of dollars. For cash conscious companies or those that don't need to raise funds, this is a game changer. In a direct listing, no new shares are issued. This means that the ownership stakes of existing shareholders, whether they're employees, founders, or early investors, aren't diluted. In a traditional IPO, new shares are issued, which reduces the percentage of the company owned by existing shareholders. If you've worked hard to grow your stake in the company, the last thing you want is to see it diluted when you go public. Direct listings and introductions prevent this from happening. Unlike an IPO, where the price is determined the night before the listing by underwriters, a direct listing allows the market to determine the price of your shares from the start. While this might sound risky, it can actually be a benefit. With a direct listing, you avoid the often problematic IPO pop where shares are priced too low and then skyrocket on the first day of trading, leaving money on the table for the company and early investors. With market-driven pricing, the share price reflects real-time supply and demand, not a predetermined price set by a small group of underwriters. Companies like Slack and Spotify found this approach to be much fairer to their existing shareholders. 
Another major benefit is flexibility, since generally no lockup period is required in direct listings. Shareholders, especially employees and early investors, can sell their shares immediately. In a traditional IPO, insiders are often restricted from selling their shares for several months after the listing. Direct listings bypass this restriction, giving insiders the liquidity they may need and providing a smoother market without the rush of insiders selling their shares all at once after the lockup expires. Direct listings offer more transparency in the process. Without investment banks acting as intermediaries, companies maintain more control over their narrative, their process, and ultimately how they engage with potential investors. The transparency of this method aligns well with companies that already have strong name recognition and established financial backing, making them less reliant on the PR push of an IPO. Now, let's talk about who should consider these alternatives to the traditional IPO. First, direct listings are perfect for companies that already have strong name recognition. If you're a household name like Spotify or Slack, you don't need a roadshow to educate investors about who you are and what you do. The market already knows your brand and potential investors are likely aware of your business model, reducing the need for the extra marketing push of an IPO. Direct listings and listings via introduction are great for companies that don't need to raise fresh capital. Maybe your business is cash flow positive or you've already raised money privately through venture capital or private equity. If that's the case, you don't need to go through the whole rigmarole of an IPO to raise more money. Instead, these methods allow you to go public in a more straightforward, efficient manner. Tech companies that are already backed by major venture capital firms often lean towards direct listings because they don't need additional capital and have large amounts of private funding. Many of these companies are also interested in avoiding the traditional IPO pricing process, which can sometimes undervalue their shares. If you've already been operating in private markets or through secondary platforms like Forge or SharesPost, Direct listings or listing via introduction might be your natural next step. If there's already enough liquidity among your private shareholders, this can make the transition to public trading seamless. Of course, like any financial decision, direct listings and listings via introduction aren't without their downsides. One potential risk is the lack of capital raised. If your company needs money to expand or scale, a traditional IPO might still be the better option. Direct listings don't raise new funds, they simply make your existing shares public. Additionally, smaller or lesser known companies might struggle to generate sufficient trading volume since they lack the market visibility of a big IPO launch. There's also the potential for greater price volatility early on. With a direct listing, the market sets the price based on supply and demand, which can lead to more fluctuations especially in the early days of trading. However, for companies with a solid shareholder base and strong demand, this risk can be mitigated. Now let's talk about our company, ASMX Group, and our regulated partners and stock exchanges. ASMX Pro provides a fully digital platform that simplifies the entire listing process, making it easier, faster, and more affordable for companies to go public via direct listings or listings by introduction. Whether you're a tech company, a financial services firm, or even an emerging business looking to scale, ASMX, along with our exchange partners, like the Merge Exchange, has the infrastructure and expertise to make your journey to the public market seamless. We wanted to take the complexity out of the listing process. Traditional methods involve multiple intermediaries, underwriters, and consultants, each taking a cut of your capital and adding layers of paperwork and inefficiency. ASMX removes these barriers by offering a direct-to-market platform where companies can list their shares with ease without needing investment banks to handle the process. Businesses can execute a direct listing or listing via introduction at a fraction of the cost of a traditional IPO. This is especially beneficial for companies that are looking to go public without issuing new shares or raising fresh capital.
instead of being bogged down by exorbitant fees and slow, cumbersome processes, we aim to streamline the experience from start to finish, allowing you to focus on growing your business rather than navigating bureaucratic hurdles. One of the things we are working very hard on is growing our global reach. When you list your business through ASMX, you won't be confined to local or regional markets. You're opening your doors to a worldwide network of qualified investors. These are investors who are registered on regulated platforms from Jersey to Abu Dhabi, who you can tell your story to via your own digital roadshow. What's more, ASMX utilizes its own social network to ensure that your company is visible to the right investors. Those who are not only interested, but who are qualified to invest in your particular market, so that you and any fundraise you do undertake is compliant with local regulations. I don't want this to turn into an advert, but we became very frustrated with the legacy way of doing things and believe that the process of listing at each stage could be made better, more efficient and less costly. If we can achieve that, we can attract more exciting companies to list and give them more options after listing for raising funds through liquidity, transparency of information, and a direct route for conversation with their current and potential investor base. If we can do that, we have a win-win. Companies can access public markets earlier, accessing capital earlier, and investors can benefit from any early strong growth of those business as a consequence. So there you have it, folks. Direct listings and listing via introduction might just be the smarter, more efficient way for your company to go public. They offer lower costs, no dilution, and more control, making them ideal for established companies that want to avoid the complexity of traditional IPOs. If you're considering going public, weigh these options carefully. For the right business, they can offer a seamless path to trading on the open market without all the headaches. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Bullish Talks. If you found this episode helpful, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. I'm David Bradley Ward, and I'll catch you next time where we'll continue unpacking the financial strategies that matter most for your business and your portfolio. Until then, happy trading. Oh, 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 oh,